Welcome to the Author Out Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Adam. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Um, as always, we're socially distanced. It's the way we've ever, only ever done the podcast. Ross on the East Coast. I'm still in the Midwest. And Adam's in Utah tonight. So we're, we've compressed our time zones a little bit. Normally, it's <laughs> literally almost every show is East Coast, Central, West, yep. or Pacific. I was called it West Coast. West Coast. Um, West Coast time. It always will be. That I literally had one of my kids the other day be like, Dad, when they say like eight Eastern, seven Central, what does that mean? I was like, our shows are on at seven. Just don't worry about. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. I lived in Florida for three years and had to deal with actual like Eastern time zone, like television. No, luckily everything, it's no longer a thing because everything streams, but like, holy crap, that True. was awful. True. Um, eh, yeah. Hit or miss, depending on what you're watching these well, days. That being, that being said, like, I love being on the West Coast because sports start at like 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. Like, versus like, college football is like 9 a.m. Yeah. Super Bowl yeah. on the East Coast is like you, you're going to bed at like 12 30 or 1 a.m. Well, that's why they've started starting them earlier. They used to start seven or eight. They start at five yeah. now. Well, Shit, five for me. Sorry. Fucking should have done that all along. <laughs> don't, don't, don't try to bring logic into this. So. <laughs> yeah. Football and logic. Everybody's got too much CTE for that. Sorry. Oh. I know your kid plays football. That was mean. Well, he's a lineman. So like, it's like two steps and hit somebody. Hope most of the time it's not like running down the field. Risk, and I am concerned. Uh, that being said, he's wrestling right now. He's in the season of wrestling, and I watched a dude definitely get like picked up, thrown, and then bounce. But the only part of his anatomy that hit the mat was his noggin. Good God! Um, mm. oh, yeah, man. you I, know the, uh, the the WWE's headquarters is in my town. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so the weird part. You, you're closer to my wife tonight than I am because she's true. on a work trip on yep. the East Coast. <laughs> anyway, yeah, she's uh, we're gonna welcome Adam nice. to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Already all over the place. It's normal for us. It's yeah. Uh, if yeah. we didn't tangent, it wouldn't be our show. So we're welcoming me Adam to the show. He is from Blue Line. Do you guys call it Co or Company? Uh, Blue Line Co. Actually, <laughs> officially is just Co. <laughs> okay. We got See, lazy on the LLC and just left it right there. I, I'm a fan of that, actually. I'm like, don't we? One of my kids' names is just a very short four letter name, but I wanted it to be this long, like much longer name. My wife was like, We're only going to call him this anyway. I was like, I know, but I want to do this. And she's yeah, like, you wanna... No, you're getting this. And I was like, Okay, fine. You want to make now it, it allows on me... every standardized test. Yeah, it allows me to extend his name into ever what I want it to be. So I can add like the end of Benjamin to his name or the end of oh, yeah. uh, Christopher to his name. Like I can add all these other endings to his name, which just allows me to be creative. But so Blue Line Co. Blue Line Co. <laughs> Do you want to give us your elevator pitch? What is Blue Line Co? Uh, Well, that's a great question. So we're a fly company, a fly fishing company, but... um. I've I, I've been in the cars for a very long time, and also my buddy Steven is uh, he's very adventurous as well, and it, it, he he and I co own Blue Line Co together. Okay, and um, he and I have been uh, we've done some pretty crazy, pretty wild builds, trips, things like that, things that we just never filmed. We you know this was back even when we were in in college, didn't have much money. I mean, he, and he and I have actually been been uh, really good fishing friends since middle school. And uh, it we started doing some kind of pretty wild, crazy builds, things, things with cars, things with boats, a uh, little bit, little, just a little bit of everything. And uh, some of our friends, parents, uh, family was like, man, y'all really should start videoing and documenting some of this wild stuff that y'all go and do. Um so we actually launched a couple years back. We launched the largest fly fishing series on YouTube uh, that is called the Short Bus Diaries, where we purchased a <laughs> short bus, converted it into a camper van for four of us to travel around and fish. And uh, this is uh, that was on a separate channel. Um, but we wanted to come out with something after doing that video and that video series with that camper van. I mean, it's a short bus. It's not going off road. It's not going anywhere. Really. It's mm -hmm. actually quite limited to where you're able to take it. Mm -hmm. Um, 
we really wanted to do an overland build. I've been kind of in the off-roading space scene, if you will, for quite a while and uh, love it personally, have never done anything professionally in the off-road scene before. So or, uh, really not off-road, I guess it would, it's not on the road. It's dirt roads. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, we um, count that as off-road. That is <laughs> off-road. <laughs> off of a road. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, off of a paved road, uh, some stuff like that. And so we were really interested in coming up with a video series. We really wanted to do something similar to this for a long time. And finally we were like, you know what, we need to pull the trigger on making this happen this fall. Uh, so we got, we got that filmed in the fall and, uh, there we go. Um, but cool. blue line is a fly fishing, uh, fly fishing company. We produce flies, uh, and also some fly fishing gear and we are able to, uh, I, I guess kind of kind of the point of where where we come from is uh, I'm grew up in North Alabama. Our company is kind of based out of North Alabama, even though I am in Salt Lake. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually just recently moved to Salt Lake. We started Blue Line and I grew up in North Alabama. So did Stephen. And uh, so we're used to serving kind of, if you will, underserved uh, fly fishing communities. And we wanted to make it so that it was a little easier for people to be able to get out, get on the water and go do something fun and not, you know, have that release. And I feel like overlanding is a very similar thing. You get to go out into nature, go get to do something cool. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we want to make it a little more easy, a little more accessible, put out good information, good, you know, how to videos for people to be able to get out there and go do it because the more people that we can get out in their backyard, in their hometown, the more people who are interested in the outdoor resources in the waterways in their hometown. Um, and thus, hopefully, if they enjoy it, they'll become stewards of the river, we would say, but maybe not just rivers, maybe trails, maybe, you know, a nature mm -hmm. park, maybe it, you know, maybe it's your local off-road trail, things like that. So um, that's cool. kind of our, a little bit of our backstory, kind of where we're from and why we're doing what we're doing. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> fishing and off-roading and hiking, whatnot, it's all kind of different means to a similar end. Exactly. You know, checking out of, of the, you know, day to day and, and just like having your piece, whatever form that piece takes. Um, so I admittedly don't know shit about fishing. Why fly fishing and not <laughs> another kind of fishing? I mean, my exposure to fishing, I've, I've gone fishing twice in my life. And one of those times was before I knew what fishing was. So sure. This this is why I, actually, I wanted this interaction, Ross. This is what I wanted. <laughs> good. Good. So, uh, I, I, I just personally like fly fishing. I'm, uh, Steve, Steven and I, my company, we're very much in the, uh, kind of a weird space between uh conventional fishing and uh fly fishing mm -hmm. so as you can see on like our website here we've got a lot of things that maybe don't look like the tiny teeny tiny little bugs that you might see that uh, that like river runs through it comes it, through your head homie, we have a lot of, my, of <laughs> one of my most favorite reads ever so you're oh, good preach oh, to the choir now <laughs> absolutely <laughs> um so you know, you see a lot of the things on our website look like small bait fish, little, you know, uh, little minnows or crawfish or things like that. And um, so we actually are really into what we call those. So those are called streamers for those of you who are not super big into fly fishing, but um, <laughs> they kind of mimic the same thing that you would throw on a conventional fishing rod. Um, why fly fishing? I, I don't know. There's, there's just something to it that it, it's a little more difficult. It certainly takes, there's a little bit of a learning curve. Um, mm -hmm. you know, certainly there could be some off-road, uh, links to that, but yep. you know, it's, it, I guess it's the difference between driving off-road and driving down the road. You know, it's, okay. it's a little more difficult. It's, it's something that you really have to put some time and effort and energy into. Mm -hmm. And because you do have to do that, the reward is greater. Yes. Um, okay. That makes you sense. Don't, you don't get lucky fly fishing very often. <laughs> You're not just um, on a boat. With yeah, the, uh, yeah. Yeah. You might, you might throw out, uh, you know, a hot dog with a bobber and get lucky, I feel like. <laughs> but uh, that doesn't really happy, happen with fly fishing. Then you've um, wasted a hot dog. dog. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was, uh, was a good waste of a hot dog. <laughs> hot, hot dog with a bobber for me I always ended up with a snapping turtle. And I was always like, what the <laughs> hell? Like, no, thank you. I'm, the, I'm also the only guy who my it's brother dinosaur. who's ever taken fishing, he used to, he used to fish off a pier to go shark fishing and i caught a conch shell 
Nice. <laughs> all all the same equipment as him. Like they okay. set me up. I I reeled in a Kong show. At least you didn't like, catch nothing. I mean, that's better than literally better than nothing. Yeah, no, they're protected, Ross. Like I had to throw. Oh, okay, back. so it's worse. Like it wasn't. Yeah. yeah, it was way worse. I didn't know that. It's worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll, we'll My knowledge educate you on the Gulf, the Gulf Coast. I was like fly fishing because my family's version of fishing was go around sit in a lawn chair wait for your bobber to go under and that, i would get bored i can't where, do that yeah, yeah. Well, at least with fly yeah. fishing like i'm walking the stream so even if i catch nothing i had a nice hike in the woods with a cool mm. environment it was better than it lawn seems chairs much yep. more interactive than the you know stereotypical like dude on a boat with a 12 pack and you know hopes and yes. dreams <laughs> yes yes um, and i should know more certainly stuff. my best friend lives in colorado and he's been fly fishing forever you know and, and he loves it um it it's a hundred percent like what? if you're not actively doing it though like it's not it's not something that you're going to turn around and be like oh yeah we're going to have this conversation completely really <laughs> like it's there's true. a reason <laughs> true oh, so okay so i mean in in off-roading we have like moab and you know some other places that are mecca for for wheeling. Where's uh where's fly fishing like holy grail spots? Uh northeast is kind of where a lot of it in the US originated. Um there's a lot of really great uh fa- you know famous fly fishermen, not that any you guys would ever know any of <laughs> famous fly fishermen, but uh a lot of people in the northeast that do it and then also um I mean me personally Montana is like, yep. you know, I mean, it's the river runs through it. There's a yeah. reason it's from there. I mean, it's it's like the Holy River. Grail, the Mecca, but then you've also got a lot of cool stuff in like Oregon, Washington on the East Coast, California. Mm-hmm. Um, Alaska is incredible. Um, you know, as far as you know, sense. US kind of regions, there's some mm-hmm. really cool stuff in, you know, both on the East Coast and the West Coast. And that's it. Everywhere no, in I, between. Um, East Coast in New York, like Roscoe, New York, there's some good stuff that I drive past on on my way to go off-roading all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, and those guys are there bright and early, you know, <laughs> yeah. fucking cold, whether it's cold or it's scorching hot. They're my, out there. My Those kids are, are trained on road trips to look at every river we cross and look for dudes, especially in Colorado. <laughs> every every bridge we go over, every underpass near water, they're like, yeah, there's a guy in the river. I'm like, yeah, bud, they're fishing. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're supposed to be there. In- including two weekends ago when it was like 12 degrees outside. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. that's right. <laughs> F- me, fish are already wet who i mean they don't know <laughs> yeah, they're already they're, wet and cold they no, don't fair enough <laughs> the water fair was enough. still moving so yep yep oh, man. <laughs> that's funny so what if uh tell us about a couple of your like biggest favorite trips you've done doing this kind of stuff um so i uh, just from being in Alabama, you know, we're, we're a little closer to the, you know, saltwater stuff. I, I, I've really enjoyed, uh, getting into some more saltwater fishing and big, big fish, obviously in saltwater versus like, you know, bass or trout. Um, what constitutes a big fish? I'm sorry to interrupt. You, but just, just, uh, um, where's the, where's the break even between. <laughs> I, I, obviously, obviously that totally depends on, on what you're fishing for and where it is, but, <laughs> okay. um, you know, freshwater fish generally are going to be smaller than a saltwater fish. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, getting, getting into some big fish, like, uh, you know, a hundred pound tarpon is going to be a big Holy fish. Crap. <laughs> um so <I'm> <laughs> uh yeah so you know you start catching fish that are as big as you and you're in the water with them and you know you're trying to kind of hold this thing in the water <laughs> man you know, i saw this. jaws when i was way too young i was like six years old when i saw them the first time i am traumatized by this shit i always like the guys in the kayaks that you could see them reeling something in as it comes up next to the kayak oh yeah like, this where are you gonna as... put that buddy like, yeah. good job okay. but <laughs> so so uh so good trips have been chasing big fish. um so, saltwater fish has been big but i i also have really started to enjoy you know uh, native native fish and that's a lot of what um we did want to work with on this uh on this film project the reason i'm talking to you guys um so a lot of the trout across the u.s are not native to the u.s um they're hmm. they've been transplanted from different places across the world and plopped into streams and rivers and ponds and lakes near us, which is, uh, you know, n- neither here nor there uh, on this podcast. Uh, I mean, fun to fun to fish, fun to target. You know, f- family fun. There's a reason that they've been put there. 
Um, but there are some native fish species uh, that we really want that I really like to target. There's a couple of native fish to the U S and uh, so we really wanted to be able to target uh, native cutthroat trout, which is uh, the fish that is native to like Utah, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, yep. Wyoming, or okay. Wyoming, Idaho area. Um, and there's some, there's really only like two fish that are native to, uh, to California there. Um, hmm. And that, that rainbow trout has actually been placed across the entire country so a lot of the rainbow trout that you catch are not and that's not it's it's a wild fish but it may not be a native fish um hmm. the natively it's from california so uh <laughs> anyways part of uh part of what we wanted to do was to go you know use this use this vehicle get out in the middle of nowhere and catch a native fish a fish that was you know, for the last million years living in that river, mm -hmm. that's where it's from. That's what it does. That's its job is to catch back to the fish. source. Yeah. I mean, right, shit, we, right. we chase <clears throat> the same kind of stuff off-roading, you know, whether it's like ghost towns or, or mines or, yeah, you know, like primitive dwellings that we, that we have on maps and hunt down. So sure. Yeah. We get it. Same thing. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, so the, the film series you're working on and, and your means by which you're getting to some of these places Sure. Let's talk well, to Zuzus. <laughs> let's do let's it. Talk, let's talk to yeah. Zuzus. Let's nerd, so, let's nerd out on a Zuzus. Dude, so we've lot, been very lot. heavy Mitsubishi for a while, so it's kind of nice to... Ooh. Wait, hold on. It's almost the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I had... Uh, just, just off of that the other day, this like really, really put a huge smile on my face. I'm driving down the road. My So to start for viewers, I have a 1991 Gen 1 last year of the gen one Azuzu trooper big boxy looking mm -hmm. goofy looking truck it's so fantastic so, <laughs> it's, it's quintessential it. like late 80s and early 90s yes yes it is um so <laughs> i'm i'm driving down the road in uh in this goofy looking Azuzu, right and this is this is like before i'd done anything to it stock as you see here mm -hmm. um and I come across a, a late 80s, early 90s Mitsubishi Montero, which, I, I mean, as you guys know, like, if you took the badges off of them and put oh, them yeah. next to each other, you'd yeah. be like, which one, which one's mine, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, God, I bet this person has no idea what they're, you know, what they're driving, what they're in. I bet they're just headed to the grocery store or whatever. And I pop them one of the, you know, one of these. <laughs> And, and they did the same thing back. I was like, yes, dude, weird, weird eclectic eighties, early nineties car owners just had this moment on the road <laughs> exactly. by my house. That's amazing. I mean, weird, uh, weird car people appreciate weird cars, yes. you know, like really appreciate them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but like, I mean, you know, it was funny cause I was driving up to it and I was, I saw it coming in the distance. I was like, is that, a, is that another gen one Azuzu? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So, you know, saw the Mitsubishi emblem on the front because I mean, from from a little bit away, they truthfully oh, yeah. look like box. I know. Yeah, there you go. Box. <laughs> so this is, this is, is actually boxes? our our Hold editor's box. Jeff's Montero, and so like literally, mm. there's, there's so not funny. much different oh, there. Oh, perfect. That's great, man. Like, even that the, was such a special time. In even cars. the bumper surrounds look like they're almost identical. Yeah, it, like, they really do. <laughs> I didn't even realize how identical they were until that moment. Yep. And uh, yeah, I, so I think Jeff's is right around the same year too. <laughs> Love it. Um, That's great. So we uh, bought this 1991 Isuzu Trooper and have been converting it into a fly fishing rig, um, overland slash fly fishing. So, uh, you know, obviously, as we were kind of just talking about there, fly fishing lends itself to, you know, being kind of out away from people. Um, we've definitely seen a really big thing for us and part of our success in catching bigger, better fish has been getting away from people, mm -hmm. not heading down to the parking lot, stay, you know, taking six steps to the river and fishing there, yeah. but going way out in the middle, may, maybe up in the headwaters, maybe, you know, way away from where other people might be fishing. And uh, that's what we wanted this Isuzu to do. That's what we wanted to do. This build series around was number one, a budget car, where it wasn't, you know, maybe it's it's not obvious. It's not my daily driver. I mean, it's totally admit.
daily. Right. Um, what's your I daily? wanted to have. <laughs> what's your daily? <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess truthfully, actually, now it has turned into the trooper. Um, I do have because <laughs> it's so much easier to drive around town than my uh, Raptor on 37s. Nice. nice. Okay. Big, well, fans. Um, Big fans. EcoBoost Raptor or uh, really it is it is the EcoBoost. It's a okay. seventeen motor stuff is stock. I've done a lift mm-hmm. kit and fit the 30, 37s. Um <laughs> so well good. Well done. It, it 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 gets around, but you can't park it anywhere. Uh, even yep. going to the grocery store is a pain in the ass with that truck. So <laughs> the uh, the Isuzu is actually truthfully turned into my daily driver. But <laughs> when it's not, it has gone to the shop for a couple small things that sm- small things that I did just simply did not have the time to fix from owning my own company and doing some things. But um, I did have to go put a new clutch in it. So uh, from okay. I, I blew the clutch on the trip in the oh. video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you're owning up to it. I mean, owning up to it. Um, but uh, it, we, we can get there in a minute, but the uh, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I do, I do daily drive that, but yeah, um from some of the trip, uh, you know, being able to really be able to get out there, get out in the middle of nowhere in a vehicle that, you know, it's not a brand new Tacoma. It's not a brand new forerunner. Um, you know, I, we kind of wanted to give that like, you know, keep your daily driver. We understand you, you, you might not be the kind of guy who's going to go out in the middle of nowhere with your daily driver, potentially, you know, scratch it up, ding it, mm-hmm. go over some ruts and things, maybe break potentially your daily driver car. So why not have a third car that's a budget vehicle that you can take out fishing, take out in the backcountry, and be able to access some of these areas. So that's the uh that's the whole reason, logic theory behind why we wanted to do this build. Okay. That uh that so. tracks. Yep. <laughs> one plus one equals two on that. Um so so what are what are the specifics of the build? I mean, we love getting into the nitty gritty and sure you know, the, so, the stuff that people don't even <laughs> think about. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So uh getting into it. Um I was actually back home in Alabama and I've been t- speaking with one of my I of course I, you guys know exactly how it is. Car people just somehow find each other, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have another buddy in Salt Lake <laughs> who just happens to be a weird eclectic car guy who also fly fishes so nice. okay. great for we were like instant like best yeah. friends right <laughs> do we just become best friends yeah. that's that's <laughs> yep. exactly that's exactly what it was when i met him <laughs> so uh he yeah. starts he, he he and i are like you know what yeah we got to do this video series let's start trying to find a truck for it so we start uh he starts trolling like uh so in utah we have something called ksl which is like mm-hmm. our version of craigslist we start trolling like cars and craigslist and auto trader and you know the classic auto trader bring a trailer all the stuff and i'm actually back home in alabama he sends me this link to it on our our local craigslist and he's like dude i think this might be it i click on it and it's (laughs) it's our truck and 160,000 miles one owner okay original owner god damn says every single piece of paperwork uh, you know, it, he's got all this stuff with it. Uh, good shape, needs some work. And I'm like, and, and for a price that I'm like, oh. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so the real issue. I, <laughs> I'm actually back home doing another film, like a strictly just a fishing thing. And I'm calling this, I'm blowing this dude's phone up. I'm like, I, I'm coming. <laughs> where are you? I'm sending someone to Nobody's you to buy this car. Yeah. Um, so I actually call my buddy and I'm like, yo, uh, yeah, I got him on the phone. Wh- when can you meet him tomorrow? You're meeting him at 10 a.m. Like, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, I'm planning your quickly. day now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning your time. Um, so I actually have, we, we do have, uh, he, he's kind of a partial employee. He's about half time with me a part-time employee he also has another like full-time job he helps me out because he's my friend but we do have a full-time employee and i call her and i'm like yo uh so instead of actually shipping orders tomorrow um you're gonna go with colby to pick up a 1991 azuzu (laughs) naturally that has to be in your job description if you work for blue line fly fishing company is sometimes you're going to go buy some weird boxy looking vehicle from the 90s willing to drive everything for as other duties assigned 
Yeah, mm, yeah, yep. exactly. <laughs> it's in every job exactly. description. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I holler at her and I'm like, hey, look, like we got to buy this thing. And she's like, ah, yeah, whatever, okay. So I send my I send my, my buddy Colby and her to go look at this thing. And I'm like, yo, I don't care how y'all buy it. Like, I, you know, if you get there, you like it. Like, I'm good for the money. Y'all buy this thing and, and you're going to get paid back. Like, don't, don't worry about it. We'll figure that out. I'm not worried about the money. I'm worried about like getting this thing. Gotcha. So anyways, we get my buddy Colby calls me. He's like, dude, th this is it. Like, this is exactly what we want. Um, so it has the Isuzu branded. It's the Isuzu motor, not the V6. Uh, okay. done, doing a small mm -hmm. amount of research. I am not admittedly i am not an azuzu nerd <laughs> i told these guys right before i got on the podcast i'm actually a land rover nerd um we accept you for you all. <laughs> don't hold it against me yeah i've owned i've owned 15 land rovers in the past or Holy sorry I'm, I'm sorry i've owned 30 land rovers in the past 15 years i actually wow. counted them out the other day it's not in and for those of you listening it's not because they keep breaking that's not the reason <laughs> yes, ah, sure. Th that's not the reason yes, that sure, i keep sure, owning sure, them sure 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 that's what you tell um, yourself isn't yeah it? that's that's I'll what i tell my, myself texting my buddy right now 30 goddamn yeah i've owned about I've 30 had, over the past i've had three forerunners in the last four years and i thought that was bad yeah it's it's actually it's actually it's actually a problem i'm not gonna lie to you but <laughs> i didn't come here to talk about land rovers so um th so this that's so another so episode <laughs> that's, yeah, a, right. that's a that's all yeah that's a whole nother thing <laughs> um but so it's got the uh azuzu branded four cylinder motor which so i am told is better than the v6 which is uh the v6 is from a, is a chevy motor yeah okay. uh the the zuzu motor even though it's a four cylinder it takes like 70 horsepower from factory i'm <laughs> sure like half of those horses have got out by now but <laughs> it feels it's like it anyways <laughs> yeah, um the, the someone yeah someone left the paddock gate open over the past you know 30 <laughs> years and some horses ran away mm. um but it, it it's a great motor it's like a sewing machine like it's actually very quiet. It's got plenty of power to get it around. Um, and I mean, I, I feel like the motor is just bomb proof has a five speed standard, which that really just made my heart double in size for this thing. I don't know why, maybe it, maybe it is my weird boxy Land Roverness coming out. I just love, I absolutely love a four wheel drive, uh, you know, standard transmission. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I can't explain it. It's, I don't know. That's one of the six mysteries of the world, I guess. But <laughs> is it? I just I can't figure it we out. We get it. Is it diesel or gas? It is a petrol motor. Okay. Uh, gas. Uh, sorry, that was the Land Rover. <laughs> Slipped mm -hmm. out. You're good. It, <laughs> we speak top you're, here. You're, you're, you're <laughs> showing. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a gas motor. Um, but it's uh it it actually has been a great great little motor so far. Um, when we got the vehicle, so no joke. Uh, the, okay, so let me get small backstory on kind of going and buying it. Again, I wasn't there. This is what I'm hearing from my employee and my buddy. <laughs> um, they go buy this truck from this guy. Uh, it was actually his uh, boss was the one who was selling it. He couldn't meet his older gentleman who had this is a his main car for a very long time, uh, daily driver and from Southern California. Oh. So very little Good rust, news. very little, you know, uh, all the road issues here that you might have in the mountain West. He had moved here about five years ago. Um, when he had moved, he'd bought a different car and he started having hip issues, got older, had a hip replacement ah. Ooh. and so gone. got to the point where he did not want to drive the manual anymore. Mm -hmm. Totally get it. I'm extremely unfortunate, bought something newer, you know, much comfier, obviously stand, you know, uh, automatic transmission and you know that was now his daily driver so was like hey help me get rid of this thing i don't understand how to sell a car on the internet but like let's post this on the internet <laughs> so that's actually the guy who owned the car he <laughs> no joke uh so when i got the car i have uh i, I probably should have grabbed these things real quick they're over there i have the original window sticker okay oh, i have a awesome. booklet an actual notebook dating back all the way to like may of 1991 all of the things that this guy has ever done to this car crazy from it repairs maintenance. I mean, it's like literally it's, it's like this guy's like journal of his entire life. It's like, all right, April of 1993, Man. I checked the brake pads and I <laughs> looked at, I checked the coolant levels. Coolant levels were oh, fine. That was like just <laughs> of neuroses is the kind of person you want to buy an old car from. Yes, exactly. Yes. So, um, 
now not it it was not spick and span when we bought it because he had not been driving it for a long time mm-hmm. i totally get it he loved this car uh the the guy we bought it from said he actually cried when he was like hey we actually have to sell this thing oh. so i was like oh gosh i hate that but <laughs> but we're gonna yes. do cool things with it but it's yes cool. yeah. have a life. um well, so exactly. He was actually pretty happy when we were like, hey, like we actually like we have some YouTube stuff going. We actually have a really big plan. We plan to like breathe a lot of life back into this car, totally re- redesign it into like an off road overland. Like we're going to use this thing. Um, and he was actually pretty happy about that. So um, we redesigned it into a uh, into our fly fishing rig that we did. And uh we were, we were really fortunate to have a have a good previous owner that kept really good records. So when I could tell you that this is the original clutch, it was the original clutch that I blew <laughs> uh, because uh, yeah, I flipped back through the little booklet and I'm like, okay, well, I don't see clutch written in here. Great. This is the original clutch. <laughs> well, um, but you know, it's original clutch right. at how many miles? 106, uh, all, getting close to 170. Yeah. Okay. In like 30 years. Like that's yeah. great. At yep. elevation with that little power. Yeah. That much, that much power. Yeah. That much power. <laughs> Love it. Um, so anyways, power. no, it, so he made, <laughs> uh, so it did sit for, like I said, roughly about the last five years he owned it. It did sit. And uh, so we did have our work cut out for us. We replaced every fluid in this thing. Uh, the clutch, I, it, when I started driving it, I was like, the clutch is bad on this thing. I, I already know it. Um, I was like, you know, let's at least maybe we can get a film out of it, which we did. I got it back home. I limped it back to Salt Lake after the film. Um, but, uh, you know, it, we I, driving it around, it was rattling. The suspension was absolutely gone. I don't know if you've got that uh suspension part of my <laughs> that was that was good uh so <laughs> that was a hammer yeah it was a hammer yeah there's also you know, an some... entire dude in your engine bay at one point <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of room in there oh, that four man. cylinder is not very big i was to say or the um, guy wasn't that big a guy so <laughs> <laughs> the uh anyways uh so we've got actually got one up there where you can see so that's my buddy colby he pushes down the old azuzu suspension we replaced with old man emu and so mm-hmm. he pushes down the old man emu suspension and then let's go the azuzu suspension doesn't move it like, doesn't it's, just, it's stuck totally <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> totally flat the, azuzu, the obviously the new old man emu lift kit suspension starts you know coming back up and so anyways it, i was like man okay. we have to replace this i don't care I don't care what we put in there. It's going to be better than this. Here we go. I think um, I got your clip. That's a liability. Oh, here it is. This is great. Yeah, here's the clip of it. And it's this exactly awesome. as Adam described it. Is they both go all the way down, <laughs> and the old man Emo immediately re- recoils, and the other shot does not. The other one just sat all. still. Yeah. I can <laughs> feel so that in my, in my spine. Through, yeah. Coming through oh, the you, oh, oh, you could. You could. Um, there's so driving there's that- some uh, 37 Raptor <laughs> wheels in the background, too. Yeah, <laughs> just a little, just a little hint for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that uh, that that thing just didn't. Yeah. So we had we knew we had to put a suspension in it. From coming from the Land Rover world, I am admittedly a big old man emu fan. Have used their stuff for a long time. I've had multiple multiple trucks with old man emu stuff, and so we knew we were going to be loading this thing down with not only fishing gear, off roading gear, but our camera gear. Mm-hmm. Plus, you know, we, we've got rafts, whitewater rafts that we fish out of, things like that. We, we knew we were going to be, you know, needing to have some weight in this truck to carry. So we decided to do the upgraded suspension with the lift kit. Also let us fit 31 inch tires. The tires were trash on this car. The guy knew he was getting rid of it. He drove until the, I mean, the cords were showing on some of it, even Ooh, if you were going to, even if you were going to drive it around town, like it wasn't even safe to drive with those uh, wheels or sorry, with the current tires. So we got uh BFG 31 inch uh, KO2s, KO2s, which, yeah, which has just been great. I mean, again, I've had a lot of different trucks with those wheels and or those tires and they've been great. So sorry, I've been looking at wheels today. So <laughs> you're, you're good. Um, at least in your mind, you're actually making the differentiation between wheels and tires. <laughs> yeah. All of that yeah. can be excused. <laughs> I, I still correct my children about that. They're like, Dad, I don't like this wheel. I was like, that's a tire. That's a t- that's a, that's different. That's a tire. <laughs> no, we've been uh I've I've been looking at wheels all day because we do want to do black wheels. Uh I just I don't I just think it'd look clean. So yeah, it look fantastic. Anyways, um 
Yes, yeah, so there's a photo from us gearing up to uh, to go on our first inaugural trip with it, where you saw the the main film is from there, and uh, us kind of getting it loaded up. So yeah, it's so that's a lot of good amount of shit you got in there. <laughs> hey, my, turns turns out, gear, Mar- fishing turns gear, out, large gear. box on wheels is actually a, a, <laughs> yeah. a good, good place to play Tetris. It is, it is. The roof rack was like uh, you'd ha- we needed the roof rack. It is kind of funny, even though it is a big four four door, you know, a big four door car. Um, you know, I mean, it's certainly smaller than like a current uh, current uh, forerunner. It, it, it's nineteen ninety one big. Yes, exactly. <laughs> which is way smaller than today's. Yes, and exactly. and admittedly, as we said a minute ago, I daily drive a F one fifty. So you you know, space yeah, has yeah. never been an option in the F you know, or never a question in the F one fifty. And now it's yeah. like, oh god, where am I putting all this stuff? Um so the roof rack actually came really, really did come in handy with this one. Uh glad we really glad we did it with the truck because now we've got our waterproof bags that of course we can take on the boat with us, whatever. We can throw a bunch of camping stuff in there. A lot of our, you know, not essential camping gear or film gear went in the roof and mm-hmm. on the roof rack. So Do these is this the right boat or is this a different one? That is a different boat. That's it. <laughs> that's actually from a uh, saltwater trip that we did earlier. It's a uh, I, I had it's a, a feeling. it's there was a beach. it's a it's a bright red raft. If you okay. can see that on there anywhere, there uh, or there's a dark gray one too that also pops up. But um, so, anyways, the the roof rack was like integral. Turned out to be integral in the in the film. Oh yeah, there hmm. we go. Yeah. So that's kind of what we that's kind of what we fish out of a lot. So. Uh, they don't weigh much trailer doesn't weigh much, but you know, having a little bit of towing capacity is great. Um, and certainly that's coming in later episodes. Okay. Well, uh, can you tease anything you have planned for it. So we are, uh, so we already have episode two and three planned. So the next two episodes, um, we are potentially, it depends on timing and things we are wanting to do, uh, just because, uh, you know, so we did, idaho for our last one we mm-hmm. want to do some different scenery idaho the area in idaho we did was southern idaho so it was pretty flat uh kind of sagebrushy um we really want uh, so i think the next one we do is colorado uh obviously for a couple reasons huge off-road crowd huge scene mm-hmm. there good fly fishing um quite so great. i think colorado yeah is, i mean there's some hills obviously with this as you can see there wasn't a lot uh the other way of that's where i blew the clutch <laughs> going up that <laughs> open diffs Oops. with a standard trans was a little it beat me <laughs> i i just dumped the clutch on the third one to get up it tire yeah. comes off the ground and like it was yeah it was a whole thing it's a learning experience it's good. It, was. Yes. it was <laughs> um but so i think colorado is probably the next one the next video the third video we plan to do for next year is going to be uh likely montana yes. over towards missoula which if you guys okay. aren't though it y'all might not be viewers might not be it actually gives really big pnw vibes okay. from that area a lot of big hmm. evergreens lot lot of mountains a lot of hill you know bi- i mean big mountains i mean you're up in the mountains um really cool pnw vibes from that area so we hmm. wanted to really change it up go do something cool um and likely we want to do uh after we get the third one out kind of get everything set we've got a little bit of a following for this video um by 2024 we hope to do some bigger bigger projects bigger off-road things we're going to keep upgrading it all next year so hopefully we'll actually really be able to do some cool off-road stuff with it and uh the plan is maybe do a rally and a meetup with people with kind of similar fly fishing rigs in 2024 cool. that'd be cool. amazing yeah there's definitely uh definitely some crossover there yeah i mean i'm sure we all know plenty of people who on on their break from off-roading go fishing yes you know yes. Or, or spend their nights doing that around uh around a lake or something uh Dude, sure. the, the adventure, adventure van company i was at it was like constantly like where can i put my rods like, <laughs> like it's a giant van we'll definitely have space for you sir it's gonna be okay. yeah right <laughs> we'll, we'll find room and there was a lot of like uh overhead storage inside the van so there was all kinds of stuff that they would mm-hmm. do on the inside so I didn't realize how West Missoula was for whatever reason. I thought it was. Oh, dude. Yeah. No, it's like all the way over there. Yeah. It's like dead south out of Kalispell and Glacier. Like it it, it looks like PNW because it's almost PNW. Well, yeah, that's the reason it looks that way. (laughs) Um, 
but uh, I no, I do love Montana. I've spent a ton of time in Montana. I mean, I don't know. I'd kind of consider it a third third home for me. Anyways, I've probably spent the mo- most time in that state than anywhere else uh, that I haven't lived. And definitely, you know, Missoula is such a cool place. Uh, there's a lot of cool off roading, off road trails, a lot of cool scenic stuff. Uh, but we would just kind of want to keep switching it up to different parts of the country and different scenery, so that. You know, if hopefully the viewers watching at home are like, oh, that kind of looks like where I'm at. Oh, that's mm-hmm. kind of the fishing that I do. Things nice. like that. So, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. if you end up in the Northeast, give me a shout. Uh, <laughs> I will. Because I've never done any of this and I'd, I'd sure like to give <laughs> Dude, a if shot. if you drive the trooper oh. to the Northeast, yes, give Ross a shout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Take me 14 days. Oh. No, I would... Uh, <laughs> I might Did trailer I, it. Yeah. yeah right. Right. Or I you might have a uh, raptor. throw throw, throw yeah, yeah. Please totally. Yeah. It, it, I think it'll fit in the bed actually of a truck. <laughs> what? <laughs> but uh they yeah, are not no, big. It, no, it is not it is not big. I, I do worry in a windstorm it might just tip over. I mean it's like driving an aluminum can. Dude, I was but, I, I spent a night on top of Fremont Ridge in Wyoming and the wind came up and I was in a transit van, but like I was glad the van was pointed into the wind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it can be. It's a little <laughs> sketchy. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's a reason there's no trees up here. Yeah. <laughs> Unfamiliar territory in the Northeast. Like that. <laughs> Short of hurricanes. But, you know. Yeah. yeah. Come hang out, Ross. It'll be fun. Yeah. Come enjoy our blustery winds. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Weren't you complaining about 50 mile an hour winds like the other day? Like, Yeah. And it didn't actually get that bad. Oh, you know, okay. you go on the weather channel, it says wind advisory, 50 up to 52 mile per hour gusts. And then you check it and it's like, okay, this maximum sustained gust we had all day was like 26. Yeah. That's okay. like a, that's Thanks. a normal that's, day here. That's, that's windy. A yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. Dude, I drove, like it blew my chairs over, but that's yeah. about it. I drove across Southern Utah, uh, God, forever ago. And it, I, I mean, I'm from Kansas. I'm used to wind and the wind that I experienced in Southern Utah was way worse than anything I dealt with in Kansas. Yeah, yeah. Even in Salt Lake, it's been windy at my house. I mean, it's been like, holy crap, mm-hmm. that's that's some wind. Just, just blowing the alcohol right it out. It blew the state. other way. <laughs> it did. It blew all the alcohol out of the state. Uh, right out of the beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how they keep it such a low concentration here. That's funny. <laughs> just because of the wind. Uh, yeah. Ross, ever tell you the story about the kid from the Northeast who came to the Midwest and he was asking us what the windmills were? Oh, the, like the windmills that the wind blows and it pumps water out of the ground and fills the, the trough. He was like, what do you guys use those for? And, and uh, I had a buddy tell him that that's how we keep the tornadoes away. Ah, that makes and sense. I, and being from yes. the Northeast, he was like, yeah, yes. sure. No? Completely. Oh, I get that. Oh, there's nothing that keeps the tornadoes away. But it's... Sounds like uh, homie's got to go back and watch some, some old movies. <laughs> it, it was... I felt like it was fair because we'd had other pen pals from the Northeast that like legitimately in their letters, this is like when I was like nine, asked us if we had shoes. So <laughs> what? Yeah, because their version of what the Midwest is in Kansas is like Little House on the Prairie. Like, like Dust know. Bowl. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, when you're nine and you're writing someone that far away, you're like, hey, do you have shoes? Do you have bathrooms inside? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm really glad from north alabama that i didn't have pen pals from. <laughs> well, people northeast. would have been really people would have been uh, really mean to me <laughs> right yeah i was just looking at north uh, alabama the other day shoes are over <laughs> in, in all fairness <laughs> only wear shoes when i have to uh, i i did i did get in really big trouble from a company that i used to work for because i didn't wear shoes to a business meeting but that was a it was a whole nother thing a, a, what part of the reasons that you no longer work for said company <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> It was it was actually mutual. I'm not just saying that. <laughs> Dude, North Alabama is uh, only 10 hours away. That's funny. Uh, no, it's actually it's kind of funny that we're we're talking about fishing because we um so we have beaches down on Long Island that you can um basically like pay for a pass and you can drive onto the beach and you can camp on the beach and you can drive the whole like the length of the beach as long as you have a fishing pole. Like one per adult, okay. and uh, sure. and I have the pass, and <laughs> we were gonna go this summer, and then um, turns out having a kid doesn't really, it's not really conducive to spending a whole day on the beach. <laughs> um, but we're you know I've been thinking about it like every like other day since because 
you know, it, it seems like the most relaxing kind of thing that you can do. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So as we, um, as we part this show, any tips for like first time fishers, you know, people just like just, just getting started. Who've never really, uh, who've had this conversation. That's the most conversation they've ever had about fishing. <laughs> um, Yes, certainly as far as, uh, you know, head into your local, you know, fly shop or uh, tackle shop, whatever. Um, Of course, YouTube has a ton of really good, you know, how to videos um, Mm -hmm. is along with, you know, just some if there is anything local near you, some some sort of local experience. Um, I'd also say, I mean, it's it's not about catching the fish, right? Like if, if going fishing was the reason, or if catching fish was the reason we were going fishing, we would have quit fishing a long time ago. Yeah. Right. Like I've caught, I mean, I I've been fishing a long time and I'm a, you know, I'm a professional fly fisherman. So, you know, yeah, but I've it's, caught so many good fish in my day. It's like, it's, that's not even the point anymore. Right. Okay. Like if you're, so, if you're new, do not get wrapped up in that. The point is that you're not at work. You're, you know, Yeah. Oh, oh, fly fishermen love golf. Fly fishing. Wow. Golf is the best <laughs> thing that say. came out because it keeps people out of our river. And, exactly. And that's, oh, <laughs> that's all we want. Well, it's good that you mentioned the not getting wrapped up in like the, you know, the not competitive aspect of it, but like the the actual task, because yeah, yeah. I feel like it would be just, you know, self-deprecating the whole way through <laughs> if it doesn't go well. Yeah. Went, yeah. Do, you know, which do, it still can be. Which it can be certainly. And I, you know, it's probably even more so when you're filming it and you're like, Hey, I need this fish to cooperate. Why aren't you cooperating with me right now? Fish. But it's harder um, when it's a job. <laughs> yeah. Fish. That's, that's when it turns into a job. <laughs> um, but certainly, you know, it, it's not, it's, it's not about the fish. Don't worry about that. Like you're, you're there for other reasons. The fish will come. Like if you keep mm-hmm. going enough, you'll keep putting stuff together. You'll, it'll, it'll eventually come. It just takes the time to do it. Mm-hmm. Just like anything else. Okay. Um, but one of the one of the things that I I really would equate like fly fishing and off roading to is like you know I kind of almost a little bit feel like it's uh you know it's it's you versus like a versus nature it's not you mm-hmm. versus someone else it's not a it's not golf or a or a uh, you know a, you're, just, you're not playing football it's a it's you versus something nature if you're fly fishing it's you versus this fish and you're trying to figure out why this fish is doing what it's doing and how it how it's doing its thing living here in this river right versus you know overlanding's kind of the same thing like it's you versus something in nature it's you know your you and your and your truck that you've built versus you know this hill this area that you know maybe this ditch trying to get up over mm-hmm. something without breaking an axle and now you're stuck um so i feel like it's it's kind of a similar thing versus uh you, you know it can be a little more cooperative in in that aspect that you know, I, I'm happy if you catch a fish or if we're all going up this m- hill that's, sn- you know, covered in snow, it's cool if we all get up it, um, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. So I think it's a, I, I definitely would equate the two to being very similar in the mindset of that, that, you know, you're out, you're somewhere really pretty, you're somewhere, you know, out enjoying nature. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you're in your overland rig, you know, fly rods aren't very big, you pack a couple of flies and, a little real and there you go mm-hmm. so that's okay. uh, that's kind of what we would do cool hey that's <laughs> great advice <laughs> and this that's is good. this video the audio listeners have to have to check out the oh that's <laughs> yeah that's a good one <laughs> is his name legitimately hobo steve um it's not it, it he got nicknamed that a little while while back. His name is actually just Stephen, God given. Okay. Like that's that's what his mom <laughs> named him. Yeah. Um. You know, I I do believe like if you look at his birth certificate, it's just Stephen. But okay. nowadays, okay. it I think it is formally Hobo Steve. Hobo so. Steve. Yeah. Does he introduce Boy. himself as Hobo Steve? <laughs> uh, to, his business card say <laughs> his actually. You know what? I, hold on, I got to make some notes real quick. <laughs> no, um, no, his his Update his his Steve's his, business card. <laughs> yeah, his intro is just Stephen, but uh, yeah, yeah, it it really does fit because he lives. I mean, he it, it, yeah, he's got a really pretty interesting backstory. But. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sweet. Uh, I'm going to wrap the show up real fast. Um, 
it's it's very simple. I don't know why I'm stuttering over it. <laughs> you can rate and review this show wherever you listen to podcasts. We're just about everywhere. Um, you can like and subscribe this episode on uh, YouTube, and you can find Blue Line uh, on Instagram. It's at Blue Line Co underscore. Don't forget that underscore. Uh, and on YouTube, they're just at Blue Line Co. Much That's easier right. on YouTube. And you can cool. find the Azuzu Trooper build on their YouTube channel. Uh, and then it's bluelineflies.com. Yep, there Sweet. we go. Uh, and then you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can see more of Jeff Montero that he's been working on. Um, actually, I don't think he's worked much on it. I think she think it's in a really good spot right now. But I think he's I, just been driving it. I don't think he'll talk about the V8 swap jag much longer. I, I, I think I heard a rumor. I'm picking um, up what you're putting down. Yep. Uh, so, uh, Ross is no, not like the one from friends. I'm at overlanding dad and that's it. We've done a show. Yep. Thank you, Adam. Thanks Adam. Thanks for having me on guys. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. We're definitely going to have to come back and do a Land Rover, uh, focus step. Yes. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. you, you know, what, right? we're, we're both Toyota guys. So we want to have yep. this conversation for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, my first vehicle was a 99 Land Cruiser. Okay. And... Good. What went wrong? uh i didn't like it. <laughs> i didn't like it i didn't like it i also am maybe one of the only people on this planet who purchased a trd tacoma oh the because it was the only only other than a dodge which i i i, I can't do a dodge we're okay. gonna get a little car here can't do a dodge <laughs> it was the only vehicle that was available with a six-speed standard transmission again I, I i probably took that a little too far down down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. i love i can't really get over the fact that i love standard transmission and uh it was the only vehicle i could purchase new off the lot with a standard as a pickup truck and i hated my tacoma <laughs> was I it put, oh, what good. year what year trd 17 oh third gen oh, okay um, yeah that engine is just fucking terrible horror ergonomics are bad and too, the, the automatic positions. let alone literally <laughs> dreadful yeah wow it's like y'all were yeah. there yeah, yeah. I I've, I've driven, <laughs> dude i've driven we talk about this stuff a lot probably 15 of the third gen tacomas so it anyway. was it i i i thought so much in my head i was like i i, I don't care i don't care that i about the rest of it i've got a standard transmission and then I, so I professionally also guide fishing trips too. Yeah. I took it on one guided fishing trip with fishing gear, with people, with shit, with my boat. And I was like, you know what? Never mind. This is actually going back to the dealership. And, <laughs> it's awful. I'm never touching and, it. <laughs> and I left with a 17 Raptor and we see yeah. how that went. Yeah. Yep. Still got it. Went well, so I'll just close it out with one <laughs> final little thing. Sorry. Uh, one of my favorite vehicles I've ever driven was a Discovery with V8 and a stick. Five speed. So. Yep. Yep. So not the V8 Defender that you drove recently. I mean, that was just my favorite vehicle. I've okay. Made, so. <laughs> it's like, I'm pretty sure, you, pretty sure you were trying to figure out what uh, to sell. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to sell my house. Shit. <laughs> can't avoid that. Hey, you can sleep in a Defender. You can't you drive, can't drive your house. I, Love it. Your daughter not, can't sleep in a Defender. Daughter can't sleep. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> On that note, I'm stopping recording. <laughs>